please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18 Weekender. I'm Shruti Mishra. My guest today is leading a brand that has devoted itself to beauty for over a century. With its international portfolio of 34 brands, this French cosmetics giant entered India two decades ago and today is one of the leading players in the Indian beauty market. Well, you guessed it right, I'm at L'Oreal's office in Mumbai. Let's go and meet the managing director of L'Oreal India, Sean Christophe Litelia, and trace back L'Oreal's journey in India, its growth strategy and its future plans and also what's in store for the beauty conscious shoppers. JC, many thanks for joining us on Weekender. You came to Mumbai in 2013. It's been five years. Has the city treated you well? Of course. And you know, Mumbai is for me uh, an improvement from where I was before. <laughs> I, I used to live in Jakarta, okay. where I can testify that uh, the, the traffic is So you're used to the traffic snarls, everything, right? And uh, it doesn't seem to be, uh, to be so bad. I must say that in, in the worst case, when there is a big jam mm. during a Gampati day or during uh, some uh, other festival that are yeah. often in uh, in uh, in Mumbai. Uh, I use the I use the train, which is okay. just down to Lower Parel <laughs> to uh, to Bandra Kuala. And you managed to get in and get out. <laughs> yes, of course. And uh, once you have done a few times, you get uh, used to it. And I must say, they are better and more on time than sometimes the French the French train that are. Uh, Oh, wow, that's nice to hear. You know. All right, okay. <laughs> so L'Oreal entered India in 1994. It's been 24 years. And today you're one of the leading players in the Indian beauty market. And you have, what, about 14 products in India. 90% of L'Oreal's manufacturing happens in India. Take us through your growth strategy. So it's a still a short journey when you think about it. We have been a, a late entrant in the Indian market in the, in the, in the yeah. 90s. And uh, basically, our journey has been to build uh, aspirations first in India. When we came back in 1994, uh, the beauty category was uh, very basic, uh, very nascent. On uh, it was more a cleansing gesture than any beauty gesture, and mostly need based. Exactly, yeah. and uh, and fundamentally, we uh, we have created uh, aspirational brands, and we have created new categories. So we have been very much focusing not on going on the largest market that mm. was existing at the time, but building new categories that uh, the consumer for the future would want. Mm. I would mention some examples, like uh, when we launched skincare, we didn't launch a whitening product, we launched an anti-aging yeah. product. Uh, we were the first one to bring the professional product uh, into India uh, with a lot of uh, education. We brought the first conditioner uh, to, the, to, the, to the country. Yeah. We brought the first dermocosmetic product that you can find in, uh, in pharmacies. Uh, we brought also the first uh, male face wash uh, okay. a few years back, or the first casual in pen. I could mention yeah, these many are of them. Yeah, a lot of firsts here. <laughs> yeah. But you know, Indian beauty market has been growing at 10 to 12 percent, but thrice the global pace. And uh, currently being the 12th largest beauty market in the world, uh, you've led L'Oreal since 2013. How has the market evolved and how excited are you about this opportunity? India market is, is true, is fascinating and uh, full of promise for the, for the future. Because it's true there is a big, uh, big evolution. Uh, as, I mean, currently the market grows, as you were saying, is one of the fastest in the world. Yeah. Uh, it's still ranked only number 12 yeah. worldwide, so it's still, not, uh, it's still not at the level where India, of course, can be. Hmm. And when we look at our own uh, provision and the vision we have for the, for the country based on its uh, young population, the digitization of the country, the new type of consumers, the wealth that also... Uh, uh, get spread. Uh, fundamentally, we believe that India will sustain to be the fastest growing country in the world uh, for, for beauty and will become in the top six where uh, India belongs okay, when, uh, by, when? by 2025. Okay, so, so that's give good, us yeah. 10 years where India will be in the club uh, of the top five beauty countries in the world hmm. uh, with also evolve and evolve uh, consumption uh, that will be based less on again hygiene and need based and more on beauty and, uh, and, uh, and new routines, uh, which will be uh, very much driven 
by new categories like uh, makeup, uh, hair color, treatments for hair, yeah. which are still new uh, and relatively nascent in the country. You know, you spoke about the new categories, but what are your focus categories for India and how different are they from your global categories? L'Oréal globally focuses on uh, four channels and uh, through the, the 34 brands we have. Yes. Uh, and we, uh, we cover all the big beauty categories where uh, we, we can bring a, uh, an additional and uh, an added value. Uh, in India, we are present across uh, four big categories: mm -hmm. uh, makeup, skincare, hair color, and hair care. Yeah. And uh, and basically, we have uh, well, we have plans behind this uh, these four categories, mm -hmm. but with a priority that we put on uh, categories like makeup, uh, yeah. which is uh, a category that is really rising with this uh, new uh, selfie generation, mm -hmm. and this new world of uh, digital uh, and the second is of course a category like uh, like hair color is very important for uh, for us it's the origin of l'oréal uh, back uh, more than 100 years ago yeah. that uh, is very strong in india both professional and in mass market okay i know you told me you're not going to talk about revenues but what percentage of uh, revenues uh, globally comes from india or if you can tell me what is the growth rate that you're seeing uh, maybe in the last 5 years indeed i will not share too much information but what i, I can happily share is the fact that uh, i mean the, the way we look at uh, at l'oréal in india is to grow at least twice faster than the market okay uh, the market growing as i told you uh, three times faster three times than the faster, worldwide yeah. so if you do the math you'll see that it should be a uh, high uh, double digit growth, growth rate, that yeah. we want to sustain uh, over over the years hmm. and building really uh, a very strong uh, mass market and professional uh, division in uh, in the country how has demonetization and gst really impacted the business uh, you know of course the gst rate was revised from 28% to now 18% but it's still very high so the the demonetization has been a, a short term uh, impact yeah. and and uh, and after everything has come back very, uh, very quickly. So uh, we live in a, also in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a category where uh, people need to, uh, uh, to uh, shampoo themselves, yeah. to uh, use beauty. So uh, the impact was relatively limited, but uh, at the, on, the, on the moment was, was quite, uh, quite big. Uh, the GSTs, of course, uh, reform were uh, very much welcome uh, for mm. uh, having uh, one tax, uh, one India, uh, much more simplification. Yeah. It's true when the, the rate came at 28%, uh, we, uh, we were, of course, in, uh, in shock. Uh, we, uh, we, along with the rest of in the industry, we, uh, we worked also and, and tried to uh, uh, dialogue with the, with the government. To, uh, and, uh, and we were very happy to see that a few months later, uh, it was finally it was yeah. revised to 18, which I believe is a fair rate. It's still high. Okay in uh, Asia Pacific, mm. but if you look at uh, the global perspective and if you compare to the rate that was uh, applied before, mm. I think it's a, it's a fair rate where uh, uh, the consumer can benefit. While online retail is booming in India, women still prefer to buy cosmetics uh, from brick and mortar stores. Online retail still has a lot of catching up to do, but L'Oreal has kind of stayed ahead in the market and you have what about 10% of your revenues coming from the e-commerce channel. How big are you betting on this opportunity? The digital has taken the world by storm and yeah. it's the world, but it's India also. When you look at how is India today compared to what it was when I just yeah. arrived in 2013, it's the scale amazing. of digital, the scale of uh, e-commerce has been phenomenal. Uh, I think uh, you know the numbers, more yeah, than 200 yeah. million on Facebook, on YouTube, exactly. yeah. 2 billion search uh, on beauty uh, in a year on Google, which was half uh, one year before. So you see the appetite uh, of the consumers and who are looking for or searching for beauty solutions, uh, tips, uh, how to, uh, thanks to digital. So it's, it's a complete revolution. And, so uh, you do, do you see the number 10% rising uh, much, definitely. much? Definitely, yeah. because it was zero three years back. It's 10 today. In some of our categories, it's more than 20. Okay. And that uh, brings me to my next question. You know, you spoke about the digital landscape and how digitally connected consumers are changing the beauty industry. How is L'Oreal adapting to this? What are the kind of innovations you've got to the table? We have done a lot on the digital front and we have the highest... Uh, uh, share of buzz in digital. We have the highest share probably of e-commerce coming from uh, a beauty brand in India. So we have done a lot. And basically, we have completely transformed the way we do marketing. Okay. Uh, because now it's true, uh, before you could only uh, communicate uh, to your consumer one way yeah. through TV. 
Now we have engaging content. Uh, more than 20% of our media budget goes online. Uh, we have specific creative for specific type of consumers. We can give a lot of online education. Mm. So the entire marketing has changed on one side. And on the other side, we have really driven uh, e-commerce e uh, with all the nascent partners here. And we are working hand in hand because we, we co-create this, uh, this success. Uh, Nike is a great example yes. of an Indian specialist in beauty yeah. that we have worked very closely to build uh, a fantastic uh, success in India. Is it easier now to sell to Indians as now they are more exposed to global trends? And what are the uh, two to three things that you've learned about Indian women? <laughs> <laughs> so we see definitely uh, a lot of, uh, especially young Indian women, uh, coming to the market with uh, completely different needs. Hmm. Uh, they are ready to, uh, to, to test, to experiment, uh, new texture, hmm. new type of lipstick. Uh, and this was not so strong a few years back. So the, the appetite for uh, new news for uh, is, is much higher. And, and let's talk about Indian men as well. You know, you've got a lot of best-selling products as far as grooming uh, for men are concerned. Uh, do you see a change in them? Do you see a lot of demand in those products as well? Yeah, we have created uh, for men the, 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 uh, the, the category of uh, face wash with Garnier Men a yeah. few years back. And actually it has become a, a phenomenal success. Uh, we have today a, a very strong uh, market share. We have seen a, a very big evolution showing that uh, really men want also to, uh, to take care of themselves, to feel confident. Uh, and to be good on, uh, on social media. All right, on that note, it's time for us to take a short break. But don't go anywhere. Stay tuned as we talk to JC about the L'Oreal Academy, acquisition of Modi Face, and L'Oreal catering to Tier 2 cities in India. So stay tuned. Let's talk about L'Oreal professionalizing the salon industry with your L'Oreal Academy. I believe uh, in 2016, you trained over 2 lakh hairdressers. How are you making you know, beauty a viable career option? It's probably one of our biggest pride uh, to, uh, over the last, when we arrived in 1997, yeah. there was, uh, 1997, yeah. there was uh, no access to uh, quality professional product and no education. And basically you had a beauty parlor for skincare and, uh, and barbershop for men. Yeah. And when I look what it has become uh, yeah. now, uh, uh, 20, more, a bit more than 20 years later, it's true the, the, the landscape has completely changed and uh, we believe that we have been largely responsible for that uh, to, uh, to happen. So it has been a constant education. Uh, as you were saying, 200,000 hairdressers per, per year and beauticians that we train. We have multiple academies in the, in the country. We have, more than, we have uh, close to 200 educators that uh, do uh, hands-on training, do uh, academy training, do classroom training uh, in order to upskill the industry. And with that, we have been able to build really a professional market that yeah. you can find today. We reach more than uh, close to four, more than 40,000 salons in, uh, in India. Uh, we train them all. Uh, we bring them the best of the product. And actually, it's, uh, it's today one of the most successful divisions uh, for the world in Lo for L'Oréal yeah. in, in professional. So the, it's, it's, it's a great pride. Recently in March, uh, you know, L'Oreal acquired Canadian company Modiface, a leader in augmented reality and AI. Uh, and this all clearly seems to be in line with your digital acceleration strategy. How do you plan to really innovate with this acquisition? What difference will Modiface really bring to the brand? So with uh, an acquisition like Modiface, we'll be able tomorrow uh, to give all the possible services online for the consumers. Hmm. A virtual mirror, uh, the way you look simulate your okay. foundation, hmm. uh, show you the, how different style of hair can look on you. Uh, so you can really have access to a 3D augmented reality mm -hmm. uh, to talk to this new uh, consumer, the augmented reality consumers that yeah. wants online things that uh, everything that uh, they used to find only offline. You know, L'Oreal still remains to be mostly an urban brand, while HUL and other players in the market are entrenched in rural markets. Will we see a range of products for tier two cities with different price points and smaller packaging? Mostly on present in urban India, for which there is still so much to do. Okay. Uh, and and that remains our, of course, uh, primary focus. Uh, but definitely, uh, when I was, uh, we have started to build aspiration at the top hmm. in the earlier, early years of L'Oreal. 
And now we, are, uh, we have democratized uh, our, um, uh, our, our approach, of course, uh, through a larger footprint in retail, through e-commerce, yeah. where basically we bring to the Indian consumers the best of quality at an affordable price. So we have made a lot of effort uh, in India. We have invested in uh, local manufacturing. We have invested in local r &I, and we are bringing a product that uh, really are made for India. And the most iconic innovation, if I may say, is a product called uh, Black Naturals. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's a high color uh, in cream in sachet that we sell at uh, 30 uh, and below a 40 rupee price point. Uh, and it's really a world-class quality at a price that you can only find in India because it has been designed to be, uh, to be for the Indian, uh, Indian consumers. What I understand is your big focus still will be urban India, but of course there are expansion plans uh, to cater to the rural market as well, tier two cities. Yes, in the tier two cities definitely, because mm. we're very big already in the top uh, metros. Yeah. So our, our evolution and growth will definitely uh, continue in the smaller cities. Mm. And in rural, what we are saying is we don't have necessarily a big physical presence, yeah. but consumers can ha have access today because uh, with uh, uh, the arrival of uh, yes. e-commerce that uh, can serve 99.9% .9 of the yeah. pin codes of the country, Fundamentally, uh, there is no any more obstacle to have access to uh, quality product. On that note, it's time for us to take another short break. But when we return, we talk to JC on dealing with competition, L'Oreal's 2020 roadmap and its future plans. So stay tuned. The last two to three years have really shifted the focus to natural. Uh, thanks to Patanjali, L'Oreal too has been uh, pushing its natural products. How do you view that trend going forward? The expectation from consumer for more natural, um, uh, more natural beauty is not new and has not been invented by Patanjali. It's yeah. a worldwide yeah. phenomenon that has impacted the entire world. True. And actually, and for, for, for a company like ours, we have brands that are funded on, uh, on, on naturality, mm. like Garnier. Yeah. Uh, it's true it's a nature plus because consumers expect uh, natural ingredient, but they also expect efficacy. Uh, and that's what we try to bring together uh, when we launched Garnier uh, in India back in 1994. Actually, it w it's, it's one of the natural brand uh, of, uh, of the group L'Oreal yeah. uh, with efficacy. So L'Oreal has 34 brands globally, of which 14 are present in India currently. Uh, will we see more of these global brands come to India anytime soon? And what is basically the criteria when you get a brand to India? They will come in due time because today is true. The most of the brands that uh, we have in L'Oréal catalog that are not mm. present in India are mm. the luxury brands or the very selective brand, yeah. for which everything has to be done still in India. Mm. So today, the, the focus that we have remains on the mass market brand, for which we have the largest brand in the world, huh, L'Oréal Paris, Garnier, yeah, yeah. Maybelline, uh, and we are focusing very much on the professionalization of the beauty. Uh, with, uh, with brands like uh, L'Oreal Professional, uh, Matrix, Okerastas. The luxury part will come in due time, gradually, uh, but definitely uh, we will uh, add a few more brands in the course of the next uh, five to ten years, of course. Now let's talk about work-life balance. You know, I know you've been all around the world f uh, for work, but uh, I think you enjoy traveling. And how much of that do you really uh, get the time to do? It's more than a hobby because it has been my life. Yeah. Uh, I've spent more time outside of my home country than, than inside. So take us to some of your favorite destinations. Where's, where does the great escape happen? Okay, I'll be nice and politically correct to say that uh, <laughs> the last experience is probably one of the most fascinating ones. Okay. So definitely uh, India. It marks you as, as, a, as a European. Uh, yeah. It's true when, when you see uh, India, how things move, how people live through the chaos, how people remain optimistic, whatever happens. <laughs> yeah. When you see the, 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 the color, the, the warmth uh, of, uh, of, of its people, the diversity of the country, it makes it uh, one of the most fascinating experiences I've mm. been into mm. out of my uh, 55 countries that I visited over the last uh, 20 years. Of course, I love the classic tourist picture of uh, the Taj Mahal, yeah. uh, Odaipur, or, or many others. But I, I really loved a lot of the, of the, of the travel, more inner India. Okay. Something like Hampi uh, recently, yeah. after seven hours, uh, yeah. Bangalore, uh, trip to Jaisalmer, uh, yeah. trip to Gulmar. Uh, I love the Ladakh uh, every year at summertime. You can be sure that I trek at 6,000 meters wow. okay. to get some fresh air, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. And, uh, 
and also to uh, it's it's a beautiful uh, beautiful uh, beautiful area i believe uh, you have a, a roadmap for 2020 that is to be a billion dollar business are you on track on achieving that what are your efforts on that front our aim is to uh, grow at twice faster as the market grows. So you can do the math and you'll see what is the, the level of ambition we have. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we want to lead the social uh, beauty transformation of India. We want to lead through the acceleration of uh, digitization and through new innovation that will bring at an affordable price for the Indian consumers. Sure. Uh, there is another part because not everything is economic, it's about uh, target and sales. Yeah. Uh, we believe that we don't have to separate economic success and uh, and, uh, and soci societal responsibility. So we have a very important uh, roadmap also in India for sustainable development. When it comes to uh, innovation, we make sure that everything we use has a better impact mm. in terms of biodegradability, in terms of solidarity sourcing or sustainable sourcing. Uh, when it comes to manufacturing, we make sure that our emission goes lesser and lesser. Okay. In India, we're minus 60% in uh, CO2 emission, investing in solar panel, in, in, in uh, windmill, etc. And finally, sharing with all is a lot of the effort we do uh, to promote uh, unprivileged women uh, through training and education to have access to, uh, to job in the program called Beautiful Beginnings, uh, upskilling uh, the, 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 the country yeah. to all the effort we do in education with the professional uh, uh, industry. JC, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for your time. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Weekender. Until next week, from the entire team, goodbye and many thanks for watching.